something just shifted within myself and I could feel it was not anymore about my own purpose or teaching other people about their purpose and following that but it had much more to do with what I was saying before like leaning back and letting life take us again and flow with life again and then when I started to get into that energy I also could feel I don't want to work with women because of the wounding but I want to work with women because there is just so much power in women if we can bring in that dark aspects of the dark feminine that seduces and plays and that dark masculine that knows and that takes from a loving place because I really believe if we as women emanate that energy we invite everything and everyone around us to step into that frequency as well and that is how we can build this new world that we all envision. Welcome to the Soul Awakened Leadership Podcast. Soul Awakened leaders are courageous innovators and pioneers who embody a deep knowing of our interconnectedness and operate from a mindset of co-creation in service to all of life. They surrender their existence completely to a higher organizing principle that is leading them beyond separation and competition and opens up the potential for an entirely new way of being on this planet in a time of metamorphosis. In this podcast, I share cutting edge perspectives and invite the voices of leaders of leaders who don't create followers, but inspire others to step into their true power and essence. And in this episode, as you can hear, I'm still recovering from a cold. I'm in conversation with Alix van Oktrup. We've been working together quite closely in the last three years and have been exploring how to live a life beyond vacation and inspire others to do so as well. Recently, our work has expanded beyond the concept of purpose and fulfillment and called us to anchor it into a deeper level of service and surrender to life that transcends the idea of personal lifestyle optimization. This episode is rich with cues on how to bridge the worlds between business and spirituality and Alix embodies in a beautiful way what it means to be a soul awakened leader who's walking the talk. I hope you enjoy listening to her insights as much as I did. Welcome Alix, I'm very happy to have you here in this podcast of the Soul Awakened Leaders. We met three years ago in Santa Teresa in Costa Rica and we immediately had this deep connection and shared a love for something that cannot be named, but somehow it was very tangible in our connection as I perceived it. And we went on an exciting journey and created change beings together with our friend Ada. And we supported people to live a life beyond vacation, as we called it, based on doing what they love from a place of flow. And by now the river of life has taken us to move on and to focus on new and our individual expressions of this deepened inquiry. And we'll have the opportunity to unpack a bit of what is still the same at the core and yet also very different in how we bring it into the world these days. And for me, you are not just a dear friend, but also an ally on this path. And I feel that you are also a powerful example of what it means to build bridges between worlds. You mm -hmm. went to some of the top business schools in the world. You worked for Microsoft and management positions. And at the same time, you're also deeply rooted in your spiritual practice. You combine deep knowledge of neuroscience and a degree in holistic psychotherapy and also your shamanic training and nature connection. And you're also a guide and mentor for women in leadership positions or in leadership capacities. And you're a mother of two. And if that wasn't enough, you're also <laughs> rebuilding an entire regenerative village in Italy. So welcome, Alex. I'm very happy to have you here and to be meeting in this podcast format, which we've done a few times before for Change Beings and which I always enjoyed very much. So I'm sure it'll be an inspiring conversation. Mm, thank you so much. Wow, it's also humbling to hear you say that. And like you're saying, I'm I'm so excited to be in this space again together. Mm. And I totally agree with you. It feels like allies. And I love our moments of checking in together and supporting each other, holding each other, nudging each other, sometimes holding up a mirror when that's necessary and sometimes just having a good laugh. So mm. I'm, totally. I'm excited. And I'm also really excited to back to be back in this space, in this new energy that we're both in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, beautiful. So to set ourselves a nice high bar, what would make this time together the highlight of your day? Oh, 
um well for me it would be if i walk out and i feel super inspired lit up and um yeah that something new and fresh came out of our conversation that we deeply hidden already knew mm. but maybe we didn't have find the world yet to express it and that it became into materialization through words oh, i love that oh beautiful diving into the mystery together yes yeah so uh, i'm curious to to dive a little more into how you're currently spending your time if you were to describe to someone at your previous job at microsoft what you're doing today which words would you use The words that I would use to describe my time or the or how I spend my time? Yeah, what you're doing today and compared to where you're coming from. So yeah. Um oh wow, if I would say that to somebody at Microsoft. So one of the things that would be important for me is that I really would stay true to myself and like you're saying, to still be able to be a bridge and still make sure that what I'm sharing can land in a real and authentic way. Mm -hmm. And I would say that. My main focus is to bring female leaders back into their confident, powerful self where they have such clarity and wisdom that when they walk, there is a certain confidence radiating out of them that people are like, hmm, what is there? And their eyes are radiating that clarity. So they're like, okay, I would, I would want to hear what it is that you have to say and that these women are not believing anymore in these glass ceilings, but that they broke through these upper limiting beliefs that still keep keep women small um, and know that they can start to make love to life again. Mm. <laughs> yeah. I love how this aspect of sensuality is being transmitted through your words already you know there's something about the embodiment about the you know like whole human being being present fully with all of what we bring in also the workplace that is so important that i feel is very much at the core of, of what you're doing yeah and it's also something because there was such a taboo on right like mm -hmm. uh, something that we play with a lot in in the work that i do is the dark feminine and the dark masculine so The dark feminine energy that maybe I was already tapping into when you see that woman walking and saying that you can start to make love to life. I feel that that is the birthright of women, that they can feel that pleasure of, of being a, an alive being on this planet versus mm. what many um people experience when they start their spiritual journey of like, oof, it is tough on this planet and it's dense and it's hard work and we have to move through everything and yes that's also true like the the, the shadow and the the dark aspects of life are very very real but when we start to play and we start to dance with that and we release the resistance but we can feel whenever we're moving through a hardship that it's sometimes even yeah maybe a little bit painful even in a sensual aspect right like sometimes that mm. little bite or that little painful aspect can can be pleasant if if we allow ourselves to open up to the pleasure of it mm. but if we stay in that contracted of like no i want this and i push it away then we create that kind of suffering aspect so for me the sensuality is is part of like our birthright and mm. it's also the playfulness it's like yes let's play we're on this <laughs> planet to experience and to To, to, to play instead of be so serious and only walk our spiritual path and only do our spiritual practices. Mm -hmm. Like, no, I'm, 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 I've done that. But now let's bring in the play and the fun and the, mm. and the juice. Mm. I love that. There's something about the quality of leaning into life, really meeting life full on, being really intimate with life about what you're describing that is very powerful. And I feel that from my experience in the corporate world, oftentimes there is a certain dissociation, numbness, or 
at least desensitization you know, that we do a lot of things that also even require us to lower our sensitivity to what's actually going on and through that becoming less intimate with life and functioning more in a way you know which is to some degree necessary in in some of these environments if we want to play the game that everyone else is playing but i think the beauty of what you're speaking into is there is the potential to change that game for yourself and through that also be an inspiration for others to step into a new game invite them into a new game mm -hmm. mm. yeah. yeah yeah no exactly that and um i believe that that's the only way also to be a true leader so mm. something i speak into a lot as well as embodied leadership um like if you want to be an embodied leader that what i was just describing in the beginning like how you walk what you emanate that for me is an embodied leader that people want to follow and i mean leader and follow is also something that you can debate if those are the right words because it's not as much of like is i know the way and you just follow me and give up all your power and give it all to me and I will tell you what to do. Mm -hmm. Like no bodied leader is also really about listening and tuning in and hearing what is necessary in that moment for, for themselves, for the other, for the organization that they work in. But that embodied leadership and that inspiration and that emanation and that magnetizing quality that's that comes in when you when you're more true and you're more embodied and you tap into that intimate sensual qualities mm -hmm. that i believe is what will inspire change and that mm -hmm. will make people really shift from the inside out instead of that you tell people this is how we have to do it from now on no mm -hmm. they would feel like oh, i want what that other person wow what is that and there comes an intrinsic motivation for change and Yeah, it's also, of course, something that we spoke a lot about around change beings, that the only change that truly is sustainable and everlasting is when the change come from the inside. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So many people speak of regeneration these days and think of new economic systems or agriculture, these kind of things, you know, but to really focus on ourselves first and see what does it mean for me to re live a regenerative life. You know? And in so many ways, if we dream about a new earth, that works for everyone. I think what will convince the people who are deeply immersed in a world that is still very much based on this uh, principle of functioning, you know, is a life that is filled with more beauty, with more pleasure, with more sensuality, you know, so that it becomes attractive for everyone to say like, wait a minute, yeah, if I'm really honest with myself, I want that too. You know, there is something that is common to all of humanity that can guide us if we find the vulnerability to open up to that so i think it's very beautiful that you're holding point for that mm. yeah and it's so beautiful that you're saying that because it's exactly that vulnerability that is what is challenging especially in a business environment because what is happening in the business environment and even when i look back at my microsoft time when what i could see in that beginning phase of of my corporate life or at least for my working life and I was still very fresh and very young but something that was so clear and so eminent was there was so much fear mm -hmm. and I was working in the um, section of um, like the 100 biggest companies of the Netherlands so I was only working with men in suits and we would call it like the rock of the lion of, of mm. lion king you know <laughs> and they would all walk in their suit and and in those two years that I spent there I could see how afraid they were for female power mm. there was one female leader that came in and they were all so afraid and they all cluttered together and they all worked against her so that she didn't even have a chance to find her space and they were all holding each other's heads um hands above their head, heads um to not be unmasked or not be the the masculated and mm. that was also one of the things that I really tried to bring in was like how can we make sure that people feel safe because mm. if you talk about vulnerability safety is key mm. and therefore I also really enjoy working in organizations that have an impact driven focus or that are conscious businesses and that's also really the what I send out into the world that I would love to work with because there is an understanding that people want to create this safe space and that people are willing to commit to, for example, say, okay, I take responsibility of my inner world 
So whenever I get triggered, I first look in the mirror and I see whatever that's coming from. And, and, and that's an agreement that we can make. And we can also make an agreement, for example, that if I speak my desires, that you, you will honor your boundaries clearly. Mm. And that I can trust that mm -hmm. you will honor your boundaries. Because if I have to feel for you, okay, <laughs> Will you honor your boundaries? Yes or no. You will not speak your desires and you create that unsafe space. But if you can create a safe space with all these kind of agreements, and there's so many more beautiful things you can do, like organizing check-ins before you start a meeting so that everybody express a part of their vulnerability um, and you can start to create the safe container, then you can allow people to become more vulnerable. Mm then the authenticity can come and then the intimacy can come and then the truth and the embodied leadership can come. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the beauty of the role of a leader, be it either as a formal leader in a leadership position or someone who's coming in as a coach or consultant into a team who has a certain authority that you can use these tools as permissions. You can give permission to bring in a new quality. But what I sense is even more important than having these explicit tools, practices that give permission is how you're holding yourself, how you're embodying that permission slip. And I think there is something very subtle that everyone somehow notices in what your state of your nervous system is. If you're coming into a meeting tense and afraid, then everyone, if you are sort of the leader channeling the highest energy in the space, then everyone will align with that. And if you're coming in as the leader with a very relaxed nervous system, maybe mm -hmm. even if it's uh, disruption to what people normally experience and you're coming in as someone who's very relaxed, who's not being overtaken by the system, which can also very easily happen if you're part of the system for too long. But if you maintain your state of equilibrium, of equanimity, of peacefulness of trust you know i think that also has the power to ripple out to the team and people will adapt their nervous system to your nervous system if you're offering them the safety of being more relaxed than everyone else in an environment that is very afraid so i feel a lot of that is again your own embodiment and i think that has a lot to do with your personal lifestyle so i'm curious to paint that picture a little more what would you say is different in how you're living your life now compared to how you were living your life in your corporate days <laughs> oh yeah that is night and day um well I, actually i want to tie back one second into what you were <laughs> sharing because and yes i totally agree that we can co-regulate by becoming ourselves in this full present state and inviting other people to come in that presence and it also brings in a certain level of like um, responsibility. I always have to be in this present mm. state where my nervous system is calm while mm -hmm. I feel it's all about being real. Yeah. So when we come into that meeting and our nervous system is completely hyped up and we can bring mm -hmm. that in from that vulnerable place and be like, okay, this is what I'm feeling right now, then actually automatically our nervous system will more come down and we will step mm. into the present. But I want to be mindful of not putting like an extra layer of responsibility on our shoulders. Like if you're in a body leadership that you mm. always have to be in that yeah. super high frequency state for me, mm. it's really, but how can we be so real? Yeah. <laughs> I, I love that. And I think even just that is already a big uh, differentiation to what many people in the corporate world are embodying, you know, where they hold that mask of like, I'm super relaxed. What? You're not saying that I'm super relaxed, you know, while they're super tense, you know, or holding that mask of then being relaxed and achieving the mark that you are setting for yourself. So even by disrupting the environment and sharing something vulnerable in this way and saying like, I'm really tense today, or I'm, I'm feeling fear. How's everyone else feeling about that? You know, you're giving the permission slip and you're setting the bar for, Hey, this is the level of vulnerability that is accepted here. Yeah, exactly. Love that. Yeah. Okay. So answering your question. Um, well, one thing that's already a huge shift is that I'm a mother. Hmm. So there is a, a moment in the morning where my life is completely dedicated to my little ones that often come running <laughs> or screaming um, <laughs> for my attention. Um, so one thing that I really try to honor for myself is to have that sacred window. So when I wake up, even though I hear some screaming or even though I'm being woken up by somebody else, there is a window that's, yeah, I call that sacred moment where if I consciously 
uh, step into a level of gratitude and feel my body and be only already grateful for a warm bed or a roof over my head, something really simple that I just need a few seconds for before I have to tend to something else, I can already feel how that has such an impact in the rest of the day because I consciously chose to be in that power of hour of um, being in gratitude and and feeling my body and connecting to myself. Mm. I would say that's like the first minute of difference of waking up. Then something that we actually spoke about just now before, um, I would really tap into my system and ask like, hey, what, what do I need right now? What, do, what does life need from me right now? And which activities can I bring in to get to a certain feeling or a certain state that I want to be in? And for example, today I was really tired. So also honoring that and feeling like, okay, what is it that I need to do right now and plan in the few little activities that were really, really necessary, but also really honoring a downtime and just laying on the floor and not having to do anything. Mm -hmm. And maybe it sounds small, but for me, that is huge that I don't force myself to do things that I have to do to deliver things that I have to do because I may be committed to it or I wrote it down or for whatever reason, but that I really, really honor what wants to happen. And, and that is actually so much bigger than myself. That Mm -hmm. is not, okay. What does like Alix need? Okay. Maybe today I needed more rest, but very often when I ask that question, there's a lot of inspiration coming through and there's, a lot of creativity of like, oh, this one's wants to happen and that wants to happen and that wants mm. to happen. And then it becomes some something that's so much bigger than just me because it's like, I can be that vessel for life flowing and moving through me. Mm. Um, so that would be a big shift. And then maybe the more obvious things, I would really always honor having a moment of self-practice and in 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 motherhood sometimes that is very little and sometimes i can create an hour to an hour and a half but that would be more like an exception but my my practice it's it's for myself and i love it dearly and i i also still need it but it's also i feel that's a commitment that i give to working with other people that i honor my my nervous system and my body and 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 my practice on that level so that I can fully show up and be present and uh, be present for them but also (laughs) there are more things coming and coming (laughs) Um, but also that I can be so aware to what is happening during the day because so often especially when I for example am creating a signature program like I'm doing right now the things that I bump into are the struggles or the challenges or the thought patterns that are coming in are so often the fuel for what I'm going to teach. Mm-hmm. So life will bring me all these challenges and examples and, and all these emotions will be coming up. And when I can see from a little distance of like, oh, I'm moving through all of this to be more in service of and to be mm-hmm. able to transmit all these struggles and steps and wisdom that I've gained out of it then then it's not so personal and it's you you less get stuck into the tunnel vision but you're more like oh yes okay okay life I'm still making love with you come play with me dance with me because this is now your way of giving me my teachings and my sharings instead of being Mm. like oh no I don't want to feel like this Yeah, beautiful. I recognize that in myself as well, that oftentimes when I'm working on a certain piece for my online course, you know, exactly that theme will show up in my life in some way. And I recognize like, oh, okay, it's for me to really deeply feel that so that I can catalyze it, alchemize it, and then offer, you know, the gifts back from the darkness, bring the light back from the darkness. I love how you're making yourself available for life and for the people who get the um, joy of working with you in this way. It's amazing. Yeah, Yeah, thank you. So something that becomes very apparent for me as you speak is that the life that you've been living now, that you're living now, is not so much a revolution where you cut off all ties with the old world, but more an evolution, you know, where there is still this deep longing to build these bridges because you 
have gone through the experience that many people in the corporate world are still immersed in. And I feel, you know, there's something where you care very deeply mm, that in a way drives you to build these bridges. And I'm curious, I guess I know the answer already, you know, that it's because it's just an expression of who you are, but I'm curious specifically, why do you care about the people that you're working with and that you're offering mm. these gifts to? Yeah. Um, yeah, like you're saying, it is an expression. It was something that I I took some time for to de to develop and fine tune with whom I really enjoyed working. So when I started offering my work, which I never expected when I started my spiritual journey, that this was something that I would also be offering. It was just my own healing journey that I wanted to go on. Hmm. And because I went quite radical, I in the beginning did cut all ties, um, ties to to the old world, and um, I also disconnected from many of my friends, and I ate super super consciously and super healthy, and I didn't drink a drop, and I there there was kind of a devotion, but also a strictness into it, mm. and it was good to really experience that extreme side and and to really dive into that and to get kidnapped a little bit by like the love and the light and the I'm just only speaking with the star beings and I'm up in the in the stars and being kidnapped to then come back to earth again and to find you much more um with who I wanted to work and I started really with women's work I started with full moon ceremonies cacao ceremonies women's circles because I felt there was so much wounding still in the feminine Hmm. and I really loved and enjoyed and it was an amazing beautiful journey and slowly slowly I started to transition more towards the conscious entrepreneurs um, because I was starting to working with some conscious businesses and I could see how they embodied maybe more the um, spiritual qualities but they didn't really um, embody any of the more competences of, of building businesses and that is kind of how we slowly got together also in in change beings making mm, our own journey or let's speak for myself my own journey the journey of um the experiment right like okay whatever steps we're going through as conscious entrepreneurs right now and how we are building businesses that is how we can actually inspire other people to do the same um, which was a beautiful and fun um, journey. And then I gave birth um, to a baby, not only to, to a business, and something just shifted within myself. And I could feel it was not anymore about my own purpose or teaching other people about their purpose and following that, but it had much more to do with what I was saying before, like leaning back and letting life take us again and flow with life again and then when I started to get into that energy I also could feel I don't want to work with women because of the wounding but I want to work with women because there is just so much power in women if we can bring in that dark aspect of the dark feminine that seduces and plays and that dark masculine that knows and that takes um, from a loving place because I really believe if we as women emanate that energy, we invite everything and everyone around us to step into that frequency as well. And that is how we can build this new world that we all envision. But the big shift is that it's not from like, oh, all the poor women that were going through all these tough times and we need to hold each other and we only need to cry. It's like, no, can we grab back that power that, that we hold mm. auto, like from, from birth that is natural, that is, that is innate from us. And can we awaken that again so that we can rise into those powerful women again? And that's why I'm so passionate because I feel if we awaken that in women in leader positions that actually can have an impact in the organization and create a change within the organization, then we create that ripple effect into the world. And then we really start to make shifts. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I love that. Really speaking into the resilience, you know, despite all the trauma and all the pain that has happened to 
women and men, obviously, but specifically in your work with women, you know, to acknowledge the post-traumatic growth that comes from that and the growth that is innate you know, before all the wounding, before all trauma. You know, there is something that is so innately powerful in the quality that women are bringing to the world. And I think what you're describing, you know, this reference experience of giving birth is such a powerful symbol of that, you know, of creating life from that place of love and bringing it into the world. And I feel that you're pointing to something very, yeah, just archetypically powerful in how women can, you know, from this very natural place that isn't coming from a place of force, but true power, bring this change into the world that is so needed. I love that. Yeah. And like you're saying, it's also for the men, right? Like these mm -hmm. archetypes, the dark feminine and the dark masculine and the light feminine and light masculine, we all embody all four of these archetypes within ourselves. Um, and funnily enough, I had two men reaching out today that were like, oh, I would love to join the masterclass. So mm. yeah, maybe, maybe very <laughs> cool. so it's like somewhere an opening of, because it is, it is really true. Like that dark feminine energy that is also in the men, mm -hmm. men also can play with that and seduce with that energy if it's coming from that loving place. But the thing is so often we have a distorted relationship with the dark feminine like we have misused it in the past or we judge it because we have been used by others that were in their dark feminine energy. And when you're growing up, you cannot be too sensual. You cannot be too sexual. You cannot be too wild, not too free men. Mm. Like, I don't know, behind computer screens, masturbating when they're young, like they cannot be in their full expression and, and, and being connected to that energy. So there's, there's so much distortion and shadow on that energy. Mm. but when we clear when we clean that distortion and um we make it we make it real and pure again and we can start to bring it through the heart and we can start to discover like okay hmm, when am i off point like when am i stepping into my dark feminine because i want to be seen or i want to be held or i want to be i don't want to be alone and i just want somebody to watch a movie with me so i'm just doing my dance so that my best friend can sit with me versus okay when is it coming from that from that powerful womb space of like i want to really birth and create this and bring this into the world and to do that like i want to inspire somebody to follow me and i want to inspire somebody to join this because if we're going to do this mm. all together we're going to make that shift and we're going to make that big impact mm. and and that's alive in men and women mm -hmm. yeah yeah you're speaking into this quality of agency our really true innate power when we're centered in ourselves of how we can inspire others from this place where we don't need others so much but really others it can be a gift to offer ourselves from this place and activate that in others as well and to invite others to this dance and to play together yeah because so often we come from a needy place or from a place that that is not the healthy version right if it's a dark fat masculine dark feminine light or dark um light uh, masculine or light feminine it doesn't matter like all of those archetypes also have their shadow sides and when it's a shadow part or or a distorted version it is always um because it's it's it wants to fill up something in in itself mm -hmm. And when we can start to become more and more clean of these distorted version and we can come more and more from like our sovereign being uh, agency, as you beautifully said that, and more and more from a whole place without having to be per perfect and we need to be completely whole and fixed and, and enlightened, but more and more owning these pieces and discovering and seeing like, oh yeah, now I'm actually not coming from that pure place. And we can meet somebody else that is also in that whole space. Then like the alchemy that happens, like then it's like this magic and mm. sparkles and all of it. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, you need, you need to really both have to commit to take, do the work and take responsibility and to be aware of, of these unhealthy distorted versions of ourselves that still need the other person to feel something in, in ourselves. Mm which is not easy <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah what i love about this dedication and also you know the previous work that we've been doing together is our 
yeah, dedication and passion for for going to the essence. Really, just not resting. And we found the truth, but always, you know, going deeper and looking at it from other angles, and really wanting to come to the core of what is essential. And I remember a recent conversation where we were talking about how we're bringing our offerings into the world and all the different marketing strategies that we've come across and how you should build your funnel and all these things. And I sometimes feel that dizziness and confusion of like, okay, how should I do it? You know, and through that, I easily get lost in what it is really about. And in that conversation, I felt a moment where there was something sinking in deeper for me and something was dropping down where I felt like, oh, something landed between us that is beyond all of these confusions and all the marketing and how do I sell my offering and how do I sell the invisible? And for me, that moment was when we touched on this point of surrender, really mm -hmm. surrendering to something that cannot be named and that is bigger than our personal agenda, bigger than mm -hmm. our identity. And I'm curious to explore that a little more with you and what comes alive in you when, when we tune into that frequency. Yeah, it's already it's ready when you say that. I can already feel myself leaning back a little mm. bit more, and I can even feel like how my voice is more slowing down, and I'm I'm sinking more down because when we when we tap into that space, into that knowing, and into the surrendering, then almost everything falls away. Mm. There's nothing any more that needs to be done or maybe better said nothing has to change mm. and everything is just right and good mm. at this moment and we is, this is also something that we spoke about a long time that doesn't mean that we become passive right it doesn't mean it's, i'm gonna lean back and i'm just gonna sit in my meditation cushion no because from this place from this deep surrendering this is also where that inspiration again can start to come from, but also really honoring. That was also something that we spoke about today of like, okay, today's the day that I'm not going to be inspired to create all these things and surrendering to that and knowing, and maybe that is something that I'm feeling while we're speaking about this is like having this deep, deep knowing and this deep, deep trust that life is really there for us mm. life has got us and if we can sink into that knowing and into that trust mm. yeah yeah it's good. Mm. i notice myself slowing down as well even just tuning into that frequency and speaking it about it and feeling that I'm speaking more from that place. Mm -hmm. The Tao that cannot be named. And yet the question then always is, you know, how do you package that? How do you offer that to the world? You know, but really coming from that place, it has a very different quality rather than thinking about how can I create my business? How can I make, you know, the next offering? How can I create the next clients? It's really not so much about what do I want anymore. It's really about how can I be in service and what does life want through me? It becomes more this listening, this attuning to what is moving anyways already, the energies that are present in myself. And it's not so much about what my mind wants to, you know, create and do but really dropping deeper into my body feeling my whole body actually more i feel on my feet on the ground as we're speaking from this yeah. place and sensing like oh yeah underneath that there's a deep piece as you described where nothing needs to happen and if i allow that to expand through my system then i feel like oh okay and in this everything is perfect as it is there is an aliveness that is unfolding that is guiding me that is moving me and what comes from that movement rather than the movement of my frantic mind that jumps from branch to branch and plays monkey all day long yeah yeah and what i really also feel on this quality is that's also also something that we spoke a little bit about like that purpose right like oh i want to feel meaningful i want to do something so if i'm gonna help all these women then i'm going to serve my purpose and i'm 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 having mm. meaning in life and again actually creating kind of like a new identity right like okay i'm only living my mission and my purpose when i'm serving these women which 
again, is a little bit of a trap of the ego and of the mind. But when we sink into this quality of knowing, like, I'm so held by life and I really only have to follow that rhythm and that flow of where life is bringing me to that kind of purpose that I was just spoke, talking about feels like so tiny and so small because there's an expansion in the heart that is so light and so bright and so connected with everything that is bigger around mm. here than that mm -hmm. is that is purpose but it's not a purpose of like i need to find my purpose because then i will feel fulfilled it's like yeah whoa this is the purpose of being truly truly in service of life mm -hmm. and feeling that devotion and therefore feeling that feeling of like i can let go mm. yeah yeah and for me this feeling of being able to let go comes from a deep trust yeah. And sometimes in my coaching practice, I say the solution is the problem that we're always looking for solution implies that there is a problem. And so we're keep on creating problems by looking for solutions. And we'll always have that hammer that is looking for the nail. And so in a way, dropping this mindset that we need to solve anything or that I need to find out how to find my next clients but rather tune into this trust and trust that life has my back. Life wants me to thrive. Life wants me to flourish. And from that place, knowing that if I make myself available and align and attune to life, then life will put me in the position or even more magical, life will bring the right people to me at the right time. And I don't even have to worry about that. You know, there's still a little me that is thinking I'm controlling my business. You know, I'm doing the things that will then, you know, in a very linear way, create certain results. And to some degree, I know that I do have an influence, you know, but to put myself in the driver's seat and saying, I'm the one steering this wheel is also really exhausting. It's really like, oof, that's a lot of responsibility, having to manifest all of universe, uh, of all of universe and, you know, making the sunrise every morning and all these things. I'm like, <laughs> wait a minute, who am I identifying with you, you know? And acknowledging maybe I can trust that life is supporting me and my responsibility is to open up rather than closing. And by having a too narrow aperture in a way and focusing like, okay, how do I need to structure these paragraphs in order to create the perfect funnel? I might be looking at a too narrow lens, you know, and if I open up wider and see like, hmm, what is nature actually telling me right now? What is the sloth outside in the tree telling me, you know, and how is that related to my marketing? You know, it's something yeah. that is not coming from a purely rational place, but maybe giving me so much more insight into what is life actually trying to communicate to me right now? And maybe my work is more the inner work. I recently listened to a marketing expert who beautifully said, you know, a funnel is actually 99% inner work and 1% marketing activities on the outside mm. a number that i've heard a lot is like 80 20 80 percent of the inner work and 20 percent mm. like the work that you actually do and yeah. actually a really beautiful example of that was mm, last weekend we were at forci the project in italy the regenerative living project and we were doing beautiful shadow work in a group and it was such a beautiful container and we were completely offline we were really doing the inner work and we came out and it was just a weekend, it was two days. And we came out and there were three people that signed up for my retreat that I'm hosting. Mm. Wow. That was for me, again, such a gift from life or a gift from universe. Mm -hmm. showing me again, like, yes, yes, it is that 80% of inner work. And yes, of course, the other 20% of being visible and sometimes showing up otherwise people wouldn't even know that there was a retreat that they could sign up and there wouldn't be a link and a button and blah, blah, blah. so mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um so it's that it's that beautiful dance um of our inner work and our outer work and something that really struck to me is like these three elements of fixing fighting and hiding so the moment we get into that energy of what you were saying i'm trying to solve something right i want to fix it i want to fix my next client i want to fix um my whole content for the masterclass is kind of going to come coming up tomorrow then we actually already straight away know that we are not doing the right thing like mm. the moment we catch ourselves in that fixing energy or in that um fighting like i'm i'm 
powering my way through or maybe even hiding of like oh nobody's going to show up anyway i'm just going to do anything you know like when when we catch ourselves in any of those three really inviting ourselves can we come back and can we sink mm. back into that deeper trust of life and the universe and ask again like okay what is needed right now in the moment and that's like a constant constant mm. constant practice and a constant dance of catching ourselves and then going back and catching ourselves and Mm. and then going back and again making that not so serious right like making that again <laughs> fun and playful because for example with these three sign ups like i was like okay thank you thank you life like this this is her, him for me is like a way of life flirting with me <laughs> yeah. okay beautiful yeah you know if i'm gonna give you these three are you gonna do your inner work a little bit more i'll be like okay okay <laughs> I, I, I will commit <laughs> to that i will dance yeah. i will dance more around that yeah and and I also realized while saying all of this, like I can imagine that it's not not everybody has that deep unwavering trust in life, mm. and that's also something that has to be cultivated. And I have to have done so many beautiful shamanic rituals in, um, putting, for example, the universe or life or God or spirit or whatever, um, on a cushion in front of me, and sitting in front of that cushion and having a conversation and also expressing so much anger and rage and sadness and fear that I've held in the beginning for life like because mm. it was tough and like all the hardships of going through and, and then sitting in the energy of, of life and then hearing mm. like like feeling that unconditional love that life has for me and it's like it's not like oh I'm putting you through all this hardship to tease you it's like it's just to experience life there is mm. no good or bad in the hardships they're all initiations and they're all invitations to open up for life for me like for life even more it's more invitations to to experience that life is flirting with me and that I can really start to to make love to life and mm. yeah that took a little bit of time and practice so that's also something that I just want to share that people don't feel like oh now I have to have this in a deep trust in life but that's something that you can play with and cultivate and maybe even do that practice that i was just sharing mm. yeah that's a beautiful embodiment of accepting life as your lover and stepping into this quite literal you know intimate relationship as the embodied ui relationship mm. that's great mm. <laughs> one of the questions that i've asked all my previous podcast guests is what is a change that you would like to see in the world that leads to the future that you would like to live in what is your most optimistic scenario and vision for our future well the most Allow obvious to one after everything we have talked about today is like having everybody step into their embodied leadership men and women like and becoming mm. so fucking real because it's something that I pointed out a little bit more today, but for me, it's not about like that we all have to be in this super ecstatic high frequency of like, oh my God, your life is amazing. And I'm creating all these <laughs> amazing things because that is not reality. Like there are these hardship moments and there are this deep emotion of like, oh, I'm not good enough. And oh, what if nobody shows up when I'm organizing my retreat or whatever emotions that are present. And if we become real with those and we, yeah, like I said in the beginning, start to um, kind of get the pleasure out of the pain of it and seeing the kink, you know, the kink, the, mm. the kink of, there's a beautiful book, The Exi Existential Kink, that speaks into this. Then I believe if we all live in that frequency of realness, of embodiment, of making love to life, then we can all meet each other in that way then one it will be way more fun there will mm. be so much more <laughs> egos flowing and there will be so much more oh sensuality in like our everyday lives and if i'm really honest i believe that that is what life wants from us mm. Mm. that is mm. the purpose of being alive and that's the purpose of life for us so Yes, I would say if I could wish for something is that we all start to live in that way. Um, mm. And 
life would look so different. There would be so much more nature. There would be so much more green and beauty and flowers and aesthetics. And people would adorn themselves in completely different ways and dress themselves and have maybe, maybe like how people walk around when they're at Burning Man, you know, like having <laughs> glitters and, and having so much more expressiveness instead of... Hmm. Uh, robots but everybody's yeah. expressive and themselves and everything is so colorful and alive and <laughs> there are more sense and then yeah <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah i love it and i can see how living from this place would fulfill so many needs that our current culture is just offering these cheap replacements for that are in turn so destructive to our planet all the overconsumption, all the cheap fast food you know and all these things you know it's just not meeting the true need behind what is being advertised as fulfilling these needs and so taking this shortcut you know instead of going through all these substitutes going straight to the essence of what it is that we long for and being really honest with that would be such a revelation in the sense of dropping the veil of pretense of you know pretending that we don't want intimacy and watching porn all day and these kind of things you know that brings so much distortion into our lives that it's just so dishonest in so many ways and bringing more of that honesty of admitting, yes, I want to be taken by life. I want to take life. I want to be intimate with life and all expressions of that, you know, and saying that to other people of, hey, you are an expression of life. I want to be intimate with you rather than keeping all these artificial barriers between us. I think it's such a powerful, yeah, next step for our human evolution. And I love to live into this world with you yeah yeah and so much judgments are being dropped right like we have had some beautiful practices um at ista the international mm. school of temple arts where blindfolded um, there were there were practices blindfolded nothing crazy but more can you meet another human being without knowing anything about that person and can you meet that person and then you really meet each other soul to soul Mm. So I feel when we step into that embodied leadership, we start to meet each other soul to soul and all the labels and all the colors, hairs or whatever somebody looks like or speaks like, talks like that then all drops away. Mm -hmm. And then you can even feel like for maybe people that on an eye level, maybe you didn't feel that attracted to, like there's so much attraction and energy mm. flowing there because there's just so much beauty and love and Eros streaming and that doesn't mean that we're all going to have orgies and everybody's going to have sex on every street corner but it's more can we allow that pleasurable energy to flow and can we start to follow that pleasurable energy that for me doesn't result in in sex per se but it's the pleasure mm. of having those intimate connections and the pleasure of being alive and mm -hmm. yeah the, that pleasure yeah and especially in the business world, which we started our conversation with, I feel that the river of life is forced into such a narrow stream, you know, it's like these, these river banks made of concrete where we're running through these programs in which we are allowed to behave. You know, there's a very small bandwidth in which we can move. And if we open that up to the whole expression of the river of life, how it wants to move through us, I think it'll be so quite honest destructive for the business world as we know it right now you know but in a very constructive sense you know of like it would revolutionize business as we know it if we would allow more for more of that life force instead of all the cultural codes in which we're operating with at the moment all the programs that force us into these stiff functioning robots yeah yeah and that's why i also consciously chose not to work specifically like in the big corporates ar around embodied leadership, but in conscious driven or impact driven organizations, because when these big ones are going to crumble down, those are the businesses that are going to rise. So let's start to build all these beautiful conscious embodied organizations where it's going to be celebrated when you come in your full expressions with mm. glitters to the <laughs> office, if you have an office. Yeah, mm, I love that. There's so much more we could dive into, but I realize we're coming to the end of our time frame today. Uh, yeah. But I but I have one more question that I'm really curious about. How many years ago was it that you've been working for Microsoft? I asked you earlier how you, about your lifestyle back then. 
Yeah, um, that was in 2016, I would say. 16, so about eight years ago, seven, eight years ago. Yeah. So if you imagine, if you tune in with your future self in seven years, <laughs> what would you say from that place? What has changed in the lifestyle that you're living today in seven years? And which advice would you have for yourself today from that place in seven years? Mm. Beautiful question. I love that. <laughs> well, first of all, when I you ask that question, what I'm really happy and grateful about is it wouldn't change that drastically. Mm. So I'm I'm really I'm really happy with the life that I'm leading right now. And something that I do want to give as a piece of advice to this version of me is how can you bring that realness, that authenticity, that making love to life in all the little things um in my daily daily life so when i'm with myself when i'm with my sisters friends i it's easy for me to kind of embody embody that within myself but i notice lately that um like in the little tiny things and also in in family life and in parenting that it's easier to fall into certain traps or roles or uh, of like oh now that I'm a mother of course I need to spend the whole weekend with my family and then what do you do with the family you do things that other families do mm. and I, I I had that kind of realization and I was so mad I was like oh at least you know you you fell into it but but no like you have to really also in your weekends like fully honor yourself and when you're with your family be that real and authentic expression of of you so then something that changed already a bit but it's something that I'm really now telling myself as a future version but something that I started to do was that I dance a lot and I love to dance on sensual music but now I dance mm. with my two little baby girls mm. and my one and a half year old she was just <laughs> jumping you know like I mean it's not really dancing but the, my other five-year-old she was like really trying to move her head mm. so she was looking I was like amazing like how wow. how can i really bring this into family life in the ordinary mm. things mm -hmm. and that is something that i really would like to to give myself right now yeah ah, beautiful mm. what are you currently working on and how can people connect with you and your work to close this mm. conversation yeah um so tomorrow I'm hosting a masterclass, but probably this is not going to be live <laughs> um, before that time. Um, I'm launching my signature program, Embodied Leadership, which starts the 27th of May. And it's just for 12 women, which is going to be a very intimate container um, where we really work on all these aspects that we talked about it today, like that embodied leader and with all the qualities and the making love to life. So that is something um, that you can work with me. The retreat that's coming up the 4th of June in Tuscany, Italy, in our regenerative living project, which is called Living with an Open Heart. And the big difference of living with an open heart is not just to open your heart, but it's also to have the courage to really live it and stand by it and act upon it. Um, and I have one more spot for a one-on-one -on -one, um, container, which is eight weeks. Um, and then we will work on all these aspects, but then completely tailor-made and looking at all the limiting beliefs and traumas and patterns that are keeping you still from being in that full expression. And what's the best way to contact you about all these beautiful offerings? Um, I would say for now, Instagram or Facebook. Um, my website is getting a pimp or a makeover, um, which I think will launch quite soon. But for now, yeah, Instagram or Facebook uh, would be good ways to mm -hmm. connect with me and ask about all these things. Perfect. And we'll put all of that in the show notes. But if you want to say your Instagram handle already, that people can connect directly. Yes. So that's just my name, Alix van Ochtrop or Alix van Ochtrop. Um, and I think I'm the only one in the world with this name, so that's easy. <laughs> and you will also have my link tree there with all the different offerings that you can further with. Beautiful. Thank you.
Thank you so much for this conversation. I have to admit, yeah. I came into this conversation and just in hindsight, realizing I was in a bit of a victim mode with full moon and coming out of a cold and just, you know, feeling a bit wrung down by life. And through our conversation, somehow I feel like, mm, interesting, you know, if I were really to embody what you're saying and making love with life, I wouldn't feel myself as a victim, but I would show up more from this creative, playful way and see like, mm, okay, yeah, life has brought me down a bit right now. How can I be playful with that and see it more as a play fight, you know, of really just embracing life with all the things that are not working the way that I would want them right now and to just use it creatively. So I'm very grateful for how this conversation shifted my state and invited me into holding myself differently. So that's very beautiful okay. and a testament to the quality that you're embodying, the work that you're doing so beautifully. Thank you so much. And I can't wait to have another conversation with you about all these things. Me too. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you for tuning in to the Soul Awakened Leadership Podcast. You will find all the links and information on today's guest in the show notes. If you enjoyed this episode, please share it with a friend who might benefit from the insights. Make sure to subscribe and leave a comment or review on Spotify or any of the platforms. If you would like to find out more about my work or connect, you can visit jonathanclode.com. That is J-O-N-A-T-H-A-N-K-L-O-D-T.com or find me at Jonathan Claude on Instagram or Facebook.